Welcome to Tara Talkie, the podcast that's named after the blog that's just me, telling stories to offer help, healing, and hope as you journey into your passionate, purposeful, and prosperous life. Thanks for coming along on the ride, and now on to today's topic. What I wanted to come in and talk about today, and this is just really coming up really powerfully for me in just different conversations I've had, different things I've seen. So I feel like this is this is this is for someone. And if it's for you, then then I hope that you receive it in the in the message or in the intent that it's meant for. Um, I'm working on finishing my course finally, <laughs> the you are course. And it has four modules. You are enough, you are good you are capable and you are worthy. Because I feel like those are four messages that as women, we can hear them, they look really cute on a nice little sign that you get from TJ Maxx. Um, you know, it, it's kind of the new live, laugh, love, if you will, for home decorating. But the the you are enough message is really coming through very strongly today. So I'm gonna go through a little bit uh, just to give you kind of a heads up of what's in the course, if that's something that might be of service to you, but also just because I am so, so um, burdened for women who need to know that they are enough. We get these messages from literally everywhere, uh, TV commercials, TV shows, um, magazines, you know, and, and it's not just you have to look a certain way, right? Like it's not just about body image anymore, even though that is a very large part of it for so many women. But it's almost as if there's this expectation that you're supposed to have this perfectly curated home and it's supposed to be clean all the time and your kids are supposed to wear clean clothes because you do the laundry more than once a week. Like these are my struggles. <laughs> but it's it's just this sense that whatever you're doing, however hard you're working, it's still not enough. That there's still something more you should be doing. That maybe you can keep your house together, maybe you can even work from home okay, but now you're supposed to be a homeschool um, mom, teacher, um, great housekeeper, great cook, cook healthy meals, don't you know feed them just junk food and be completely available to your husband or your boyfriend or whoever, um, just because you're supposed to be everything for them, everything for the kids. Oh, and by the way, you're supposed to work out and you know be this, this beautiful, skinny person. We just get bombarded with, with this message that, that somehow whatever we're doing isn't good enough. It isn't enough. There has to be more. And what that's doing for so many women that I see, interact with, talk with, work with, is that it's almost like we're so used to that message playing that we don't even realize that that's the message that we're getting. We, we just keep striving and striving and striving and feeling like we're, we're falling behind. But what are you falling behind from? Who are you chasing? What is this standard that you don't feel like you're getting to? Are you giving yourself enough grace? Are you able to say, whatever I did today, it's enough. I know that who I was today is enough. I know that who I'm gonna be when I wake up tomorrow is enough. And that enough can mean different things to different people. I'm not trying to insert for you what that, what that looks like. I think that everyone, when you hear that phrase, I am enough, or, or you hear me say it to you, you are enough. It can mean different things to different people and for different reasons. But so the first question that I want you to kind of feel into for yourself, and if you are a journaler, I, I, good things happen when you journal. When you are able to kind of write it out, and maybe you don't like writing, flip on the audio recording of your phone um, on an Apple, it's like the little microphone icon, and record yourself answering this question. What does it mean when you see that phrase? What does it mean to you to be enough? What comes up for you when you hear that? Do you, do you feel it in your heart and you, I am enough. Do you feel it? Or do you instantly kind of have this 
I wish I could feel that. I wish that I believed that. I wish that that was good enough. I wish that that was more than just words because I wish that that helped me actually do something. So, so that's the first, it's kind of a two part question. What comes up for you when you see that, that phrase or hear that phrase, I am enough? And what does it mean to you? What would it look like for you to fully believe that you are enough? What would it be to be enough? So if that's, if that's resonating, put an emoji in, click one of the little heart things. Um, I don't know. I don't know if anyone's watching this live or if people are going to come back and watch the replay. Um, like I said, this is not planned. This is just me rambling. I hope, I hope, hope, hope that this is making sense to whoever it is that needs to make sense to. Because here's the other part of it. Whatever it is that you feel or think about it right now, and again, journal through it. Because I bet you that something is going to come up. Some emotion is going to shake loose. It's a message that you heard maybe when you were a kid, maybe from a parent. Maybe you weren't getting good enough grades. Maybe you weren't in the, you know, cool kids club and, and you weren't enough for your friends. Maybe you weren't enough for a coach. Maybe you... Um, weren't enough for a boyfriend, you know, maybe one of your first early relationships was, was wounded because they left because of something that you weren't. And you got this message and it got stuck in your heart and in your head and in your emotional psyche that you aren't enough. And you don't necessarily carry that. It's not like it's a voice that plays on repeat all day long. As soon as you wake up, you hear you're not enough. You're not good enough. You're not pretty enough. You're not smart enough. But it's the subconscious, just constant nagging. It's like one of those dull headaches. It's probably always present. It's the reason why when you hear a good opportunity for yourself or, um, you know, something really good happens, you almost try to talk yourself out of it. Oh, I couldn't, I couldn't do that. Uh, I'm not sure that I'm completely qualified for that job. Oh, so-and-so deserves it more than me. There's always this, we downplay our own amazing strengths because someone somewhere told us that we weren't enough, that we weren't worth it, that we weren't good. And those are all just lies, lies from the devil, because in as much as the devil is the ego, it is us outside of our own divine power. In as much as we hear that lie, it is simply us stepping outside of who we really truly inherently are and were created to be. Can I get an amen? That was, that was, that was inspired. When you step outside of yourself and you believe the lie that someone else told you, you are giving your amazing power away to that thing. When you pull that back into yourself and you're able to hear and know and believe and understand that inherently you are enough. Sure, you might need some different training if you are going for a promotion. You might need to develop certain skills if there's an opportunity that, that you have four of the skills and maybe the fifth one, you just need a refresher class. I'm not saying that it doesn't always mean that, that you inherently can just launch into whatever it is that you feel like. That, that, would be, that would be to give you a false sense of security. And I'm not saying that. But I am saying that when you try to talk yourself out of something that could be good for you only because you're afraid of disappointing another person, you're afraid of disappointing yourself, you're afraid that maybe what someone else said to or about you one time is true. When you aren't listening to your own soul, your own spirit telling you, this is for you. This is right. This is good. This is true. Believe in it and trust in it. Then you are, you're, you're missing out on so much of, of life abundant. That's really what it comes down to is that when you can understand for yourself that you are enough, you are enough of anything and everything that you're wanting in life, just how you are. When you believe that, it opens up doors that you will be amazed by. So I, I want you to, I gave you the two questions at the beginning. Um, 
what does it mean for you when you see or hear that phrase that that you are enough or I am enough? And what does that look like for you? Answer those two questions. And once you have that in, what do you think, how do you think life would change? So what's the contrast? If you can, if you can kind of imagine living a life where you just inherently know that you're enough, if you can, if you can solve that for yourself and, and you can create this vision of how you would be, would you be more confident? Would you be more willing to go for a promotion? Would you be able to stand up when, when maybe your husband's just being kind of a dick and pardon my language. Um, and you're able to say, you know what, that's not, that's not how we're going to have this night go. And you're able to set a boundary around your expectations. If you can create this life that you think you would be living, if you really truly started to believe I'm enough, what, where's the contrast? Where are you now? So honestly assess on a scale of one to 10. And this, this, I realize this doesn't quite match up to being a scale, but somehow gauge for yourself. How true is this statement for you? I am enough. I am enough for that promotion. I am enough for that new car. I am enough for the, the, you know, hot fit body that I want. I am enough to hire a housekeeper. I am enough to, you know, whatever it is that your, your dream life is that you're creating. What are you, what are you feeling now? So gauge where you fall on the truth of that statement that you are enough. And then what does it look like now for you? What is your life now? If you aren't anything about an eight, nine, 10 range, where are you at? What does life look like? What are your struggles within that? And how do you think they could, they would be changed if you believed more in yourself? If you had that sense of knowing and believing and, and trusting inherently that you are enough, how would life look different? I'll tell you my story. Um, I don't even know what time it is. I probably have to go somewhere, but I'll, so I'll try to make this quick. When I didn't know I was enough, I was allowing my marriage to literally crumble. Sure, he had his own ability to, to make his choices and to do whatever he was doing. And, and that, is, that is a whole other healing and, and another course that I probably could do. But outside of what he was choosing to do, I was choosing to be in an energy where I accepted it because I didn't think I was worth anything else. I didn't think I was worth having the kind of relationship where my husband was excited to come home, where he was helpful to me in all of the roles I was trying to fill, where he was supportive of me. I didn't think I was worth that kind of relationship. I didn't think I was worth having uh, enough money left over to go to Target and just get a candle if I felt like it. I didn't think I was worth trying to build my own business. I didn't think I was worth trying to, well, resurrect. I had had a business since 2002 um, and, and got kind of told by my husband at the time that that wasn't the priority. I let someone else tell me what my priorities were supposed to be. And I lost a part of myself. And it was just like little pieces of me, just like almost like feathers, just flying out. And for me, the, the worst case scenario, what it had come down to was this, and I've, I've used this analogy before and I'll use it again. <laughs> I was almost like this beautiful parrot with these amazing colored feathers. And I had this gorgeous song that I could sing. And throughout my marriage, and again, please don't hear me just knocking my marriage in particular or marriages in general, this was my journey. This was exactly how it went for me. And yours may look similar and it might look completely different. But for me, I was, I was this beautiful parrot and my ex-husband was keeping me in a cage. It was like all he wanted to do was to have me sing on demand and he wanted to just look at the pretty feathers. But the problem was there was, a, there was this cover over the cage of him telling me you're not worth being able to be let out of the cage, right? I mean, this is a, really a stretch of the analogy, but go with it. So I'm in this cage and there's a cover. And so sure, I can still sing, even though I don't see the light. 
I don't see the sun. I'm not by a window. I'm not anywhere where my soul gets to be fed and those colorful colors get to be regenerated. And that song gets to, to expand and grow and, and become different as I'm growing. And what happened was then, eventually I became this really drab colored parrot in a cage that had no voice left because I was never allowed to feel like I was enough, like I was a beautiful parrot anymore. I let someone else dictate from me what I was for. And I never was able to get those colors back, to get that song back, to get my voice back. And I don't want that for you. That's part of why I do what I do, um, creating courses and writing all day and and just, I mean, I'm, I'm getting better about coming back into here, but it's so that if I can help someone in that painful place of realizing your feathers are falling out, your feathers are losing color, your voice is is not singing the same song, then then let's talk. That's what I'm here for. This is my gift. This is my mission. Because as women heal, as we all heal this wound and believe that we're enough, we start to heal the world around us. And I mean, raise your hand if you don't think the world needs some serious healing right now. That won't happen because someone else stands up. It happens because those of us day in and day out doing the hard work of knowing and owning our worth are stepping up to the plate. That will look different for all of you, but I promise that whatever your version or definition of abundance is, life abundant will start to come to you when you live in your abundant enoughness. Let that sink in. Life abundant comes to you when you live in your abundant enoughness. You are so much more than enough. You are more than enough. And if you're not hearing that from within your own soul, it's because you've turned that voice off because you've listened to everyone else's voice above your own. That's what we do in here. We get you your voice back. We help you grow through the flow of what's going on with life. So I think that's what I wanted to say today about you are enough. I hope that this, this talking that I've done and the three questions that I asked you um, really help open up for you a sense of getting outside of the rut, getting outside of the stuckness you might feel, whatever your situation is. What does it mean to you to hear, I am enough or you are enough? Where do you fall on that continuum of, yeah, I believe it. I'm totally a 10. 10 out of 10, I believe that I'm enough. I live in my enoughness. I, I know that I'm enough. Or zero out of 10. It actually makes me cringe when I hear that because I don't think that at all. And then what would life look like if you could believe in your enoughness? And what does life look like now if you are on the zero, two, three, five end of that spectrum. Where are you going and where are you at? You have to have a vision of knowing it can be better. And it can be better because you are worth it being better, because you are enough. So I think that's it for the rambles today. I sincerely hope that this, this message lands with where it's supposed to land. If you have any other questions, um, drop them here in the comments. If that feels too vulnerable, you can send me a message through the page and let's talk. Let's talk about where and how your enoughness starts to come in for you and serve you. And, uh, again, this is module one ish. This is just kind of a preview of the four modules of the UR course. I know a couple of you have been so patient. You prepaid for that course. And I am going to honor the prepay price for another couple of weeks. This should be out by this weekend. So you can get the prepay price, uh, $55 for it, um, through the time. Like, I'll give it a few days after I launch it. But, um, yeah, it's just a really deep journey of you finding your voice again. And through that, creating the life that you have always imagined because it's totally possible for you because you're enough. Thanks again for listening to this episode of Tara Talking. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Find me pretty much everywhere on the interwebs as at 
Terra Talking, that's T-E-R-R-A-T-A-L-K-I-N-G, or at my blog, terratalking.com. Your reviews, comments, and shares are always so appreciated. May you prosper well as you live your most passionate, purposeful life this week. And as always, keep on keeping on.